Hello, this is a presentation regarding the use of MATLAB and Simulink to solve differential equations. We will showcase this by application to a problem related to the vertical motion of a rigid sphere under the influence of gravity and aerodynamic resistance. Part 1 of this presentation will talk about the formulation of the differential equations. We define the problem as follows. We have a rigid sphere of right radius r, mass m, that is allowed to travel vertically through still air, assuming constant temperature of 15 degrees Celsius. We will assume that the density of the air varies uh, according to the altitude h. The position of the sphere is defined by the altitude h, which is distance above ground, and the velocity of the sphere is defined by v. Uh, it is defined as being positive if the sphere is moving away from the ground, and the velocity is defined to be negative if the sphere is moving towards the ground. All variables are defined using SI units. Following with the definition of the problem, there are two forces acting on the sphere. The force of gravity, which is always directed towards the ground, therefore it is negative. The magnitude of the force of gravity is given by this equation, the mass times the acceleration of gravity, g. The second force acting on the sphere is the force of aerodynamic resistance or aerodynamic drag. Uh, the direction of the aerodynamic resistance is always opposing the velocity. Therefore, it can switch direction depending on whether the sphere is moving upwards or downwards. The magnitude of the aerodynamic resistance is given by this formula. It's equal to one-half the density of air, the speed squared, times the frontal area of the sphere, times the drag coefficient. There is a third force, the buoyancy force, but this is very small, since the density of air is assumed to be very much smaller than the density of the sphere. So we will neglect the buoyancy force, and there will only be the gravity force and the aerodynamic resistance acting on the sphere. Regarding the drag force, the magnitude is given by this expression, where A is the frontal area of the sphere, it's equal to pi times the radius squared, the drag coefficient is a non-dimensional number that depends on the Reynolds number, Re. The Reynolds number is also a non-dimensional quantity given by this uh, formula and it characterizes the flow properties. Regarding the direction of the aerodynamic resistance, uh, if the ball is descending towards the ground, the aerodynamic resistance is positive, opposing the velocity of the sphere, and naturally points upwards. If the sphere is ascending, in this case the velocity is positive, then because the aerodynamic resistance opposes the velocity, it points downwards, therefore the aerodynamic resistance must be negative in this case. In this slide, we present the empirical relationship of the drag coefficient as a function of the Reynolds number. This is an empirical relationship that is determined through experiments, and the, the one we show here is valid for a smooth sphere. So, we can see here that the aerodynamic drag coefficient is plotted on the y-axis, 
against the Reynolds number, which is uh, plotted on the x-axis. So the Reynolds number, as mentioned previously, is given by this expression, and it characterizes the properties of the flow. If it's a laminar flow, turbulent flow, and different uh, characteristics of the separation of flow. For example, in this region here, we have laminar flow, and towards this region here, we have uh, turbulent flow with different characteristics uh, of the separation of flow. Moving on, the Reynolds number is defined by this relationship. Uh, v is the speed at which the sphere moves relative to the still air. Rho is the density of the air, which is assumed to be a function of the altitude. L is a characteristic length, and in the case of the sphere, it's equal to the diameter of the sphere. Mu is the dynamic viscosity of the air, equal to the kinematic viscosity times the density. The kinematic viscosity is assumed to be constant. Gathering all the information, we formulate the problem, i.e. we derive the uh, differential equation by applying Newton's second law of motion, which states that the resultant force acting on a body is equal to mass times the acceleration, and the acceleration is the rate of change of velocity, therefore the resultant force is equal to mass times dv by dt. The resultant force for our problem is the uh, vector addition of the gravity and the aerodynamic resistance. The gravity force is always negative, therefore we have minus Fg plus the aerodynamic resistance which switches direction depending on the direction of velocity of the sphere. Substituting the expression for the gravity force and also using the sign of the velocity variable we can incorporate the change in direction of the aerodynamic resistance. For example, if the velocity is positive, which indicates that the ball is ascending, that means we have a plus sign times minus, we have a minus which indicates a negative drag force, therefore pointing downwards, which is correct because it's opposing the ascent of the sphere. If the sphere is descending, i.e. the velocity is pointing downwards, that means we have a negative sign here, times minus, we have a plus, therefore the aerodynamic resistance is positive, which points upwards, therefore in the opposite direction to the velocity vector. So substituting the expression for the magnitude of the aerodynamic resistance, we have that the expression for the resultant force is given by this expression. Then we substitute the expression of the resultant force in the differential equation, and we have the first order nonlinear differential equation that determines the rate of change of velocity of the sphere. This is a nonlinear differential equation because it has expressions like the sine of the velocity, v square, and the nonlinear uh, dependence on the drag coefficient. The other differential equation is the rate of change of the altitude, which is equal to the velocity. We can proceed to solve a simplified problem by assuming zero air resistance, which admits an analytical solution, because in this case, the nonlinearity 
of the aerodynamic resistance is removed and we end up with two linear first order differential equations. Specifically, the rate of change of velocity is equal to minus g and the rate of change of altitude is equal to v. Uh, these first order differential equations can be solved easily using the separation of variables with initial conditions v0 and h0 and can be shown easily that they give the following solutions. For the case of the velocity, we know that as time increases, the velocity of the sphere will tend to become more negative. So even if the initial velocity is positive, i.e. the sphere is thrown with a velocity vector pointing upwards, eventually the acceleration of gravity will reduce the velocity to zero and that means the ball will momentarily stop and then start descending and then the velocity will be negative and increasing linearly with time until it reaches the ground. Finally, we can make a mechanical energy balance for the case of the simplified problem to check that the mechanical energy of the sphere is conserved since the only force acting on the sphere under the simplified problem is the gravity force. This can be applied on a simple example where we uh, let the sphere fall freely under gravity from zero initial velocity from an altitude h0. We can calculate the change in kinetic energy and potential energy for the initial and final states, add them together and we'll see that the total mechanical energy is conserved because the total change of mechanical energy is zero. Thank you for attending this online lecture.